requiem for the fallen uh, came from Karen Grills um, with Choirs New Zealand. She had been working with Horomono Horo, the Tangaporo player, and they had um, made some recordings with early music which Horomono had played over, and they, she, they were really taken with this sound world. And um, the idea came up that a piece would be written, um, I think it was called Cororia uh, Gloria, that was its original kind of working title, and I thought that Requiem for the Fallen would be simple and closer to what it was really going to be about. Um, and so then we we were invited, I suppose, to apply to, to do the piece, and maybe other composers were considered, I don't really know, but um, Vincent and I got the job of creating this piece. Vincent, um, first of all, he came up with an aria that comes at the end of the piece, which is the, the, um, the old soldier looking back and reflecting. Drop in its rust, the machine guns to have gone. Badges flake to dust, oh my lord, my last remembered. And I just suddenly thought that what we what would be really interesting would be to have some actual requiem Latin as well. And so we then worked on a series of movements where you would have the Latin words of something like dies irae, um, imperadisum, and the Latin words would be interwoven with Vincent's interpretation in, in the context of the First World War, which was a really uh, a terrific idea. And he was very quick to respond to that and produce amazing words which I then had to to find music to fit. I played a mock-up on the computer to uh, Jonathan Alva who was going to direct it. We, we were told actually one of the original things was that there should be some movement that it should be a, a slightly a theatrical kind of piece not just a straight choral string quartet because the New Zealand string quartet were part of the commission uh, as well. So he came in and um, he immediately said actually what I had, I, I had that tenor singing the final aria as one of the choir members, possibly wearing an a army uniform amongst the choir, and obviously standing out as not belonging. And he said, I hear that, that role as much more important, and it should be another person and another voice altogether. And I, then we decided I would need some more material, so we wrote the Memento Mori solo for him that was added after Jonathan had seen the score. And then, of course, he choreographed the, choreographed the whole thing and made it into a journey through the imagination of that old soldier, the old cobber, and and then created all the movement for it, which produced a piece which was which much, I think communicated much more widely um, than a straight choral string quartet tango puro work. One of the challenges that arose very early on, and I, was, I made sure that it did come up early on, was where it was going to be performed, and that was in St Paul's. Uh, Cathedral in Wellington, which has an enormously long reverberation time. It's not an incredibly loud reverberation time, but it's like 10 seconds worth after you've struck a note or hit, you know, sang a single note, then it'll just ring on. <clears throat> so the whole piece was going to be washed in reverb. So I had to compose it so that it was slow enough and there was sufficient pace for it to actually work in that space. That, so I kind of changed my language a bit, except I, I didn't obviously keep to that because I thought if the piece is ever performed somewhere else, it's going to be ridiculous that, for example, the string quartet's just playing long, long notes, which would be all right in there. So they have more complex things, which get a little jumbled up in, in that reverberation. But that was fine. <clears throat> um, but it did influence my composing, the pace of my composing, actually, and that was that turned out to be a very good thing. Um, and in that performance, of course, Jonathan again came to the fore. He walked into the cathedral and he said, well, right, we're going to put the stage right in the middle and turn all these seats around to make it um, audience on both sides, put everybody closer to the performance and kind of take the very long um, 
section past the uh, the choir, the, the organ and stuff, a little bit out of the piece. When it came to be performed in the Dunedin Town Hall and the Auckland Town Hall, I was actually worried that, you know, there wasn't going to be enough music <laughs> to survive. Uh, but it turned out to be absolutely fine. And, and those natural but not huge reverberate reverberations add co added colour uh, and didn't detract from the piece. In fact, maybe have even helped. So that was an, a surprise because I'd worked so hard to make sure it would, would be okay if there was a huge sea of reverb around it. <laughs> 